I think the acute ischemic stroke is unique. Like it's one of the, the sort of biggest emergencies in, uh, in practice of medicine. So for example, you could have an emergency, an obstetric emergency where the fetal heart is dropping and the, the mother needs to be taken instantaneously somewhere for a cesarean section. You have to equate it to that kind of a situation where a person has an acute ischemic stroke due to a large vessel occlusion in the brain and the brain is dying. So that is one aspect of it. But the separate, second aspect of it is now we have this dramatic treatment where we can go in using our techniques under X-ray guidance, pull the clot out, and the patient recovers. And, and we have, this is backed by not just one study, but several studies which consistently give the same message, and it's a very powerful message. So now that we have this treatment, the issue for us is how do we organize systems of care where all potential patients in a particular geography have the potential to get benefit from this powerful treatment. I think it's one of those things that Rome wasn't built in a day kind of situation, so it became standard of care, and now we have an obligation to train everyone or train the relevant number of people that they can provide this service, and the service would obviously need to be provided 24-7, 365, and some places are already being able to achieve it, some places are in the process of being able to achieve it, and then it all obviously is going to make a difference whether you're in a big city like Paris or you're in a tiny town in the middle of nowhere, and then there is also the, the aspect of whether it's sort of a um, socialistic system of medicine, where it's provided by the government or it's sort of fee-for-service kind of this thing. And then the overall richness of the country matters. For example, the organization um, in China or in Vietnam is going to be different from what it is in United States as an example. So all those factors will have to be taken into account and that probably happened 20, 25 years ago in cardiology. And, and now cardiology is quite well organized. So that's what we have to re do again. Typically right now in most parts of the world, it would be what would be called as a neuro-interventionist. So it could be a person who's from a radiology background or a neurology background or a neurosurgery background and that's not really that relevant right now. What is relevant is that a person who's used to the idea of approaching vessels in the brain and doing it in an emergency kind of setting under X-ray guidance and safely perform this procedure to remove the clot. So I, I do think that it's one of those situations that, uh, that you know, in a city like Paris, the service should be provided by those people who are adequately trained in it. And in, in pretty, pretty much every big city, there is an obligation for those people to, to provide that service. However, however, if you're in the middle of nowhere and there is no infrastructure there, and, but in the vicinity of it, in spite of their best efforts, they are not being able to sort of create a service, then we have to think about alternatives um, in terms of, and it's similar to saying that, you know, if you're in a big setup, then there's surgeons subspecialized. There'll be a surgeon who specializes in liver or in kidney or in, and there's best surgeons specialized. If you go to a really small town and stuff, then more and more surgeons do more and more tasks. It's a sort of a similar way of thinking about it and we have to create the mechanism for those people to have adequate training and so I don't think that it'll be like one setup fixes all problems. So, but at the same time, yes, the desire would be that in every jurisdiction, every possible scenario, the person who does the job has adequate training. So there's two aspects of that data that I want to tell you about. One is the data of the people who come to the hospital and they're treated and we've published extensively and then many of these trials they combine together to form the Hermes collaboration. I chair that collaboration, we publish from that as well. So one part of that is that rather than asking a question, which patient with large vessels should be included and treated, the question is almost now 180 degrees in which, which are the patients that should not be treated. That is becoming the bigger question because the treatment effect is so powerful. We've been able to show that it works in older patients, it works in patients who present late, it works in patients who have some degree of changes on their brain scan, it works in uh, males, females, it works in patients who have a very severe presentation. So all kinds of subgroups we've been able to show that it does work. So the qu question is now we need to figure out which are the patients in which it is so to speak not worth reading kind of thing. So that's one part from a hospital sort of perspective that we have to sort of think about going into the future and, and that is something that I'm writing about and how do we sort of plan those kind of studies. So, but the second aspect of it is that how do we sort of organize systems of care 
that when a patient has a stroke and they call an ambulance and the ambulance uh, personnel are there, the paramedics, they see the patient, they have two choices. They can take the patient to the local hospital close to them or they can bypass the local hospital and take it to the specialty hospital which is capable of doing this. And, and the, how do we provide them the training, the tools, the assessment, the network and how do we sort of create algorithms and, 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 and uh, mechanisms for the correct decision to be taken. What we've been able to show is through data that if the patient goes to the hospital close by and then goes to the big hospital, there is more than 90 minutes that get lost instead of going into the hospital and coming out, which is very critical in this time-based disease. Um, you may have heard this before, time is brain, which is absolutely sort of critical. And there's sort of, um, some, some people have said, two million neurons per minute are dying. And that's not true in sort of every patient, but as an average, it's true. But the idea is to get the message across that time is brain. So we have to get that patient to the correct hospital as soon as possible. And that is where we need a lot of work yet to be done. Yes, I heard that um, Professor Cognard said yesterday that the dawn trial, one of the dangers is you think you have more time, yes. but you don't. You don't. You and don't. that is actually critical. So if you think about it, I've written extensively on this topic. So let's say 100 patients come to you 30 minutes from stroke onset. All 100 will be eligible for treatment. And probably, let's say, if you have 60% good outcome, so 60 out of 100 will have good outcome. Now think about the dawn population. So let us say these 100 people come to you eight hours from onset. Probably 10 or 15 of them will be eligible for treatment. At that stage, because of time is brain, so a lot of brain is already dead, you treat those 15 people, and let's say you have 60% good outcome, nine out of 15 will have a good outcome, but it's truly nine out of 100 because 100 patients came to you at 8 hours. So if those 100 patients, instead of coming to you at 8 hours, could come to you at 4 hours, maybe now instead of 15 patients, 60 patients will be eligible, and the impact that we can have on the lives of these people is, is absolutely mind-boggling. We have to better understand which are the patients to be excluded. And that is complicated. It's not that straightforward. And I, I do agree with Dr. Jovan in terms of transiently, we can take the approach that we're going to treat everyone to better understand the question. But ultimately, um, this disease affects mostly old people. And, uh, and if suppose it's an 85 year old who is, let's say, suffering from dementia as an example, and they have a stroke, and stroke is known to be a cause of dementia. So firstly, they were having dementia anyway. And now on top of that, they have stroke and they have some brain changes. So one thing is for sure, the treatment is not going to make the patient better than their baseline condition. And that is something that we have to think about in that emergency situ situation is what was their baseline condition and, and how do we sort of look at it from the overall big picture of what the patient would have wanted, what their family wants, what is ideal for, for the overall big picture. And it's not an easy answer and we probably don't have sufficient information for that, but that's, a, that's an area which requires further work. But that's coming now. That's coming now, like in the sense we're starting to work on it. One other thing that we haven't adequately done is that let's say um, in the Paris area, there's 8 million people. We don't exactly know what is the incidence of acute stroke due to large vessel occlusion at the population level. We have data in terms of the number who show up at the hospital, but we don't have very good data in terms of the people who don't show up at the hospital. So in fact, that is another study that needs to be done for us to have a better understanding of what is the total incidence of disease and what are the factors that influence it. For example, smoking, diabetes, obesity, all these factors likely influence it. And if you're at a, so, so some city that has more obesity may have a higher level of stroke compared to a city which is much more into fitness. But we don't have, a, have too much of a, an understanding of that at the current moment. But how to find these invisible statistics, it sounds... Um, no, it requires work. It requires work. So as, as, as an example, we can start by systems of care which are more centralized, um, like say Sweden or Norway or Canada. Um, and, and in Canada, we're trying to set up a study where I live in Calgary, which is the province of Alberta, which Alberta has 4 million people. And essentially, we have, we, we have access to every possible um, hospital that exists in Alberta. It obviously requires a lot of work, but it can be done. So the, the, the future is both immense in terms of the data you're going to be getting and also the treatments that are being possible. Yeah, that, and yeah, yeah, absolutely right. The other thing is that there's also the possibility of adjunctive treatment. So we are running a worldwide study right now, 51 centers across many different countries around the world. We are running it from Calgary. I'm, I'm one of the principal investigators along with my colleague, Dr. Michael Hill. What we are doing is testing the usefulness of adjunctive treatment of neuroprotection. The drug that we are trying is a new drug, NA1, where patients have 
a acute stroke due to large vessel occlusion. They get imaging done to decide that they're eligible for endovascular treatment. Then they get randomized to drug versus placebo. And then all of them go to endovascular treatment to get their clot removed. So the idea is to show that, that is there additional benefit of giving a drug which, so to speak, keeps the neurons alive while you go open the vessel. So yeah, so there's that possibility as well that there may be additional adjunctive treatments that come out along the way which benefit the, and then the other beauty could be if it can take it a step further and we give the adjunctive treatment in the ambulance so the patient's neurons stay alive while they're being transported to the correct hospital. So that'll be like the dream. I do think that in terms of challenges, the single biggest challenge that we face is getting the correct patient to the correct hospital first time around. And that requires not just data, but it requires probably legislation, overcoming politics, training the right people, getting past egos, all of that things. Just, it is not that simple of that we just show the data or we say this is what is common sense and it'll happen. It'll require more than that.